Silicon Republic and today we'll be looking at the Samsung Galaxy S3. The first thing you'll notice about the new Samsung is the size. It's a much bigger screen than the usual smartphones, and this is the way it's all going really. So it's a 4.8 inch screen. It's this is the Pebble Blue model. So it looks really nice around the front and the sides, but around the back it's a bit disappointing because it's kind of dull because it's like a fake aluminium brush coating. Swipe to unlock. And you get a nice ripple effect when you do that, which is pretty. And the, the screen is quite dazzling. It's powered by a 1.4 gigahertz dual core Exynos processor and one gigabyte of RAM. And it runs on Android's ice cream sandwich, which is a bit uh, controversial that Samsung hasn't got a dedicated recent apps button. But if you hold down the home key, you can see all your recent apps there. And as with ice cream sandwich, you can swipe away. That's a new gesture control that they've got. And you've also you can do that with your notifications as well. You can just swipe away anything that you've already read or that you're not interested in seeing anymore. And you'll see also in the notification screen you can have quick access to a number of frequently used functions so you can disable or enable your GPS or Wi-Fi or you can fix your audio settings straight here. And it's just a really easy way to um, change settings on the phone without having to go through a whole load of menus. For storage, you're kind of spoiled for choice. You've got a 16 gigabyte model, a 32 gigabyte model, and a 64 gigabyte model, and it comes preloaded with Dropbox, which uh, will allow you 50 gigabytes of storage for up to two years once you sign in on this new device. The apps menu is slightly different to the S2 in that you have a separate widgets menu, so it's a lot easier to browse widgets, which used to just come along across the bottom of the screen, whereas now you've got a kind of full view of what you can add and what you can't, or what you can take away. And then the apps menu, you have um, you'll notice a good few S-branded apps, so you've got S-Memo, S-Planner. These are just the Samsung-based apps, and this is S-Voice, which is Samsung's answer to Siri. Send message. Who would you like to message? John. What is your message? Hi, John. This is a test. Along with S Voice, you've got a number of new functions, which one of them would be Smart Stay, which is looking at you through the front facing camera and watching your eye movement so that it's supposed to know when you're reading the phone and it keeps the phone lit so that it doesn't go into auto standby or anything like that if you've just paused while you're reading a long paragraph, which is pretty handy, but it will only work if the front facing camera can actually see you. So in low lighting conditions, it's probably not going to be so effective. But the little flashing eyeball there, that means that it can see me. So one of the best things about this phone is how fast it is. You can see when you're browsing through anything or if you launch an app, everything just happens really quickly and smoothly. Uh, the browser is also really good. I'm just going to use the native Samsung browser, which loads up really quickly. And you can open up to eight, oh, up to eight tabs if you want to and swipe through them this way. You can also open incognito tabs if you want to do something sneaky. It's also really customizable, so you can actually design the functions to suit your needs. So if we go into the settings, you can see the LED indicator here. This is the little light that shines here. So you can decide to have that to light up when your battery level is low or if you've missed a notification so that even if the screen is blacked out, you know what's going on with the phone. And there's also a range of motion controls that you can switch on and off this way or that way. And some of these are really handy, but it depends. You might like some of them, you might not, but that's why it's good that you can turn them on and off. So you can shake your phone to update it, or you can turn it over to mute it, which is pretty handy if you're in work and you want to silence your phone really quickly. Uh, one of my favorites of these is a pan swipe to do a screenshot, which is a lot handier than trying to click two buttons at the same time. Video playback is also excellent on this, because uh, it's really fast and it doesn't stall much. And one of the greatest functions, which I haven't seen on any other phone, apart from this, is a pop-out video. So you can keep watching video while you browse through any of your other apps or functions. So it just keeps playing away. And if you want to pause it, that's one of my motion controls that I can just pause it that way. So the camera settings are similar to the S2. So you've got a whole range of functions that you can, they drop down in these menus or you can pull different shortcuts and add them to this menu bar here as well. So you've got, you can change your flash, your shooting mode, your scene mode, your exposure value, timer effects. There's lots of things that you can do here. Um, some new functions include 
an H a HDR setting or share shot and buddy photo share. Share shot will uh, directly share images over a Wi-Fi connection with certain people and buddy photo share will actually use face detection to find people that you've taken a photo of and share directly with them. So it's really handy for um, sharing images over social networks and that kind of thing. When it comes to sharing photos, if you go into the gallery and you're going through your photos, it can remember how you last shared photos. So if you look, I last emailed a photo to share it, so I can just click that and I straight away can email the photo, which is really handy when you consider how many share options you often get on these things. It could take you a while to go through them all and find the one that you want, but if it, because it remembers the most recent one, it's really quick and easy to do. And these are the kind of small touches that you'll find across this phone because it's really user friendly. Yeah, so as I said earlier, the um, the display on the phone looks great, but when you take your photos, they might look a little bit disappointing when you view them elsewhere. Because the thing about this display here is, where am I going? Is that it's highly saturated in colour, and when you view it elsewhere, it's just a little bit more disappointing. This one I took upside down, so it won't view properly. <laughs> um, in that case, it kind of falls down short when compared to the HTC One X, which has great colour fidelity and really great white balance. But apart from that, the Samsung S3 is an excellent phone and I really enjoyed using it. So there you have it, that's the Samsung Galaxy S3.